See, the truth is that we're frequency, and we go through life tuning ourselves to different frequencies. And just like the radio, when you tune yourself to a certain frequency, you get what that frequency has to offer you. Welcome to the frequency that's all about turning you into a greater version of you. Welcome to the podcast that's offering you greater. You are now tuned in to the Greater Resistance Podcast with me, the Manifest Mentor, Brian Hippolyte. It's a great day for elevated consciousness, and that's exactly what we're having on episode 13 of the Greater Resistance Podcast. Let me speak to the manager. Listen, I'm Brian Hippolyte, the Manifest Mentor, six-time author, founder of Manifest University, Manifest Academy, and a lot of other cool shit that's teaching our culture and our families how to live successful lives and leave successful legacies. We see it a lot over here at Manifest University, which, by the way, is absolutely free right now. You could go to BrianHippolite.com and click the links that's available there to get you access to our daily insight, empowerment, and encouragement. And access to our classes start at just a dollar a day. So, again, go to BrianHippolite.com to get access to the Manifest University campus. There's so much going on. Don't miss these great opportunities to grow. The, 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 the Greater Resistance Podcast. Listening to anything, I can learn something new from it now that I didn't get before. So I hope that you see that uh, abundant opportunity that you have as well to take away something great, even if you know you've heard it before, because you've never heard it in this space, in the space that you're in right now. And I, I'm a firm believer of divine timing and divine alignment and the fact that different uh, a culmination of events have taken place since the last time you heard it or since the last time that you had the opportunity to get this information and right now right now it's the perfect time the perfect mixture the perfect combination of 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 reality of thought processing of experiences just the whole perfect setup for you to get what you came for and receive what you need. And that's what I believe is happening for you right now at this divine moment. I'm excited about it. How about you? What have you done? What have you done to maintain your happiness? Manifest University, I want to hear from you at this at, at this point, at this time. Like, what have you done? Because there has been some amazing strides taken in life so that a greater existence can be had i've seen individuals say you know what what i'm doing right now is not enough the what i'm experiencing is not enough and i understand and i recognize and i accept that there's greater available to me and i'm going to get it and so i've seen in the past two years since starting manifest university many lives change for the better i've seen people come in here and come to me when they first got here unhappy and and I see them in a state now where joyfulness just flows from them. They got it overflowing and they're they're giving they're showing other people how to find it. You know, heal people, heal people. So as you've healed yourself, what is it that you've been doing? What is it what is it that you have been doing to maintain your happiness so i see what tt says tt say keep the bs out of my life i don't let life experiences take me out of my higher self love myself more put myself first more tt those are powerful tools those are that's 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 the way that we're supposed to be that's how it's supposed to go down right there put myself first i got to put me first lucius i got to put me first you know what I'm saying? Not letting life experiences take you out of the experience that you got to have. It's a powerful... You know, when we learned that, it had to be such a big aha moment for you. That way, you mean... You mean to tell me I don't have to let these things dictate the way that I feel? You mean to tell me... I remember when... It, something hit Deacon Clark one day and she was like you mean to tell me I don't have to let this stuff rule my life like this I, I mean you 
You mean it does not have to be the reason why I experience life the way I do? I want to start making the change. Big shout out to Deacon Clark. She was featured on the Greater Existence podcast episode 10. And it's an honor to have her, her amazing mother there. If y'all do not already know and have not already heard, make sure, make sure that you go and check out the Greater Existence podcast, episode 10, Finding Sierra, while we where we break down where this amazing international best-selling author came from, what she's doing with her energy right now, and, and just the, the powerful things that's happening through her being. It's an honor to see, it's an honor to watch, and you're going to enjoy it. So if you haven't already, make sure that you check out episode 10 for uh, international best-selling author, Sierra Clark, talking about finding herself and everything that she's found since she found that so i remember when she had a moment where she realized that what she was experiencing did not have to shape her experience man and you see the powerful things that's happened in such a small time in in, in her life so i want to hear from i want to hear from some from from some of y'all that's the supreme confidence what's going on king how you doing Man, I'm um, I'm in never end. I'm in never ending of uh, peace and joy, and increase of peace and enjoyment. Okay, that's what I'm talking about, and a, and a never ending cycle of increase and enjoyment. Yeah, I ain't got my notes today. I'm, I'm at work and things of that nature. My happiness, on um, what I have been doing, bro. I've been getting in tune with nature, and I know that probably is not like a big thing with people, but for me. It is because, just to break it down just a little bit, I'm from the south side of Chicago, so where you see all them rappers, Chief Keef and Dirk and them, I, I pretty much know them. I, I pretty much know them, and I done been through that hood and shit like that before. You know, I got family members over there. So I'm used to the gunshots, the ambulance, mama's crying. Always, you know, I done been shot at. I done been, I done been through that shit before. And when I say I done, I, when I went through nature and things of that nature, I literally took off my shoes, got my feet dirty, and then went in the water, got my feet wet, I um, got my fingernails dirty, I felt like a kid, and it just, I meditated, all that shit just brought me joy, bro, like, for real, for real, and it just brought me in, in a state of calmness, and these are things I'm going to teach my child, you know, because... Being around that, it literally, you know, all the people out there that's they're used, to, we're used to trauma bonding and things of that nature, you know, because everybody got a story about how we lost somebody and things of that nature. So, when I say I went into nature, that really helped me let go of all of that trauma that I've been around for like twenty some odd years. <laughs> yeah, nature ain't trying to trauma bond with you. Nature, nature, that's the wonderful thing about nature, bro. It just, it, it exists in wholeness and in, in, in divine order. So it's like when you tap into it, that's, that's where you, that's, that's what you are. That's what you respond to. Exactly, exactly. And that was like, yesterday was like my first time, you know, doing the grounding thing because I'm just, I'm used to like going in nature, but Everybody was always saying to me, like, you know, you should get your shoes, you know, take your shoes off because you really need to feel the earth. Like, because this, you know, nature, it is you. You know, you connect with it. Without the trees and the bugs, I wouldn't even exist, you know. So everything is me and I'm everything and we are all connected. You know, we all come from one direct source and I'm plugged into the source. So that really helped out a lot. Man, imagine if we grew up like uh, some children on the east side of the world do um, who that's the first that's how they establish their own identity as a, as a child you know the people around them are telling them you are all of this all of this is you and and having that understanding and that connection and that bond with nature and with the universe and with yourself from an early age um Man, I, it's, it's, it's how I start my day, man. You know, I, I go into my backyard barefoot every, every morning and, um, and and have my moments of meditation before before I get to anything else most of the time. You know, if, if for one reason or another it's, it doesn't happen before I start 
um, the morning call is the first thing that I'm doing when the morning call is over. But most of the time, it's happening before the morning call. And, and you know, and just get it in sync. I stay, I, I plant my feet in the, in the ground. I face the east where the sun's coming from. I lift my palms up. I, like every receptor on my body, I put towards where all that energy is, 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 is coming from. Um, and, and just soak it all up, soak it all in. You know, it's uh, the best meditation time for me. So I'm with you 100% there, bro. Um, creating that, getting in the environment and creating that environment within yourself is, is so vital. I appreciate you sharing that, King. Deacon Clark, what's going on? Grand Rise at the top of the top. Queen, how you doing today? Joy for us and Pastor King. Hello, tribe. Um, no, I was in tears listening to Sagaru this morning because you don't see what it is you see from where you are. So if you miserable, you see miserable shit. If you are happy, that's all you're going to see. If you have poor self-management, you see everything poor. That's why you can't trust another person because you ain't trusting you. Why like you can't be loyal because you ain't loyal to your damn self. Like all of these poor judgment. And it's crazy because I didn't, I had all this poor judgment, but I could still trust other people. But I wasn't trusting me. And oh, you just made me in tears as far as that. I, Cause I really didn't know. You mean that I don't have to? <laughs> like I could choose to see the joy that's really on the inside of me and not the misery that I'm pulling from other people because I can feel other people's misery so I just meet them where they are I don't have to align to somebody else's GPS I can really align to the navigational system that's been speaking to me this whole time so a dead end wasn't even needed a story was never fucking needed like I never had to make up nothing I could just see the joy be the joy and bring the joy like I had no (laughs) idea and the freedom when I didn't have to carry this stuff around when I didn't have to oh my god (laughs) when I didn't have to see my life do the bullshit like oh I can see clearly now the rain is gone Yes, and so therefore it was no obstacle in my way but me. And so now you you get to understand you, the knowledge of yourself, saturates the love of yourself, and then comes the respect of yourself. And now I can bloom every day in every atmosphere at any time because I understand this about me. Oh my goodness, listen. <laughs> that came from the audacity, that came from the key from 111 keys of unlocking your divinity. And I just needed one key, and we've been unlocking doors ever since. That's the key. So, yeah, I I thank you and appreciate you. And then to find the space that allowed me to cultivate that, to now understand what that now looks like for me, not through learned behavior, not through learned um, traumas, not through learned just being able to recycle stuff. What's the word I'm trying to say? Just the things you can defaultly go back to. Like I was no longer wanting to live in default. When I live in default, then I'm looking for me and other people. When I'm living in default mode, I am trying to control another supreme being. How dare I try to control them and just focus on me? Because I will control the atmosphere when I understand I am the atmosphere. Instead of trying to control the atmosphere, understanding that you are the atmosphere and control yourself accordingly. You are not the cause, you are the effect. I said it backwards, you're not the effect, you're the cause. And understanding that um, will allow you to move differently. Thank you very much, Deacon Clark and Supreme. If you just happen into tuning in, we are speaking on things that we have done to maintain our happiness, to keep our, our, our happiness our joy what what did you do what did you learn what key did you begin to apply that allowed you to manage your interiority better asking myself is it true is it true okay that's a great question i love it i love a great honestly, question tell me about that honestly al 
Al did that for me. He started making me be conscious about asking myself, are the thoughts or the feelings that I'm experiencing, are, are they actually true? Or is this just something that I'm making up in my mind? Just kind of like what Sierra said with realizing and acknowledging, like you don't have to believe the foolishness that you've been hearing forever in a day. It doesn't have to be that way, especially if it's not true. So being able to ask myself that question snaps me out of it immediately. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, because we'll feel it. We'll feel it, we'll think it, we'll hear it, all that. All that. But ask yourself, is it true? And does it and does that truth stand everywhere? Every time. Because if not, it's not true. So let's let's just clarify that and qualify that. Exactly. Is that what it is across the board? Or is that how it feels right now? What it looks like right now or what it seems to be right now is that what it is every time everywhere if not then hey we might have another way that we need to look at it instead of instead of calling it truth we could call it a few other things that might make it a, a little bit more accurate to what it is that's good that was good very good Angie look at all these key, key all these keys from that for elevation that'll take a life and a legacy to a whole nother level and lead you to a greater existence. Anybody else got anything? I want, I want to make sure everyone gets the opportunity to share. Tiffany, Miss Holland Moss, what's going on? Nothing much, just grateful and loving life at this point. Okay, talk to me. How, how are you loving life? Because you've been making some changes and some adjustments in your life, haven't you? Yes, I have. Um, For me, I'd have to say the biggest one is staying mindful, not letting myself overthink, dwell in the past or worry about things in the future. You know, I'm robbing my I was robbing myself of the joy that I had in that moment, worrying about stuff that was inconsequential. So I've learned to just stay in the moment and appreciate everything, including my negative feelings. So if I'm feeling in a negative mood, what is it trying to teach me? What am I supposed to take away from this? All right, I got that lesson. Thank you. And be able to go back to being in my high place rather than hanging out in the low, bu- low zone. Mm. Rather rather than, than staying in. If you find yourself there, figure out why you're there. Acknowledge that you're there, first of all, and then choose to not stay there. Right. And also, when I see myself in a negative situation, it's. I ask myself, what is it reflecting? What am I? What am I projecting out that I'm seeing back now? Because that's something I need to work on. Forget what the other person is doing. Forget what the other situ- what the situation as a whole it looks like to me in that moment. What am I projecting out that's being reflected? Wow, that had to be a great aha moment when that when that hit your life. That this is this is not just about what they're doing, but how I'm feeling is a reflection of how I'm interpreting and and how I am what I'm creating. Absolutely. So what am I creating right now? Man. (laughs) The aha moment was great, but it was seeing myself actually put in an action. And, you know, at the end of the day, when you sit back and you look at your day, it's like, wow, you know, this would have triggered me had I not been at this place. This could have gone left, but because I was conscious and I moved with intention on the situation, it didn't do that. So it didn't rob me of that moment. Because when things go wrong, you've learned to not go wrong with them. Right. right. And, and, and not only just that, you've learned how to use your alchemy, use your influence, use your vibration to, uh, to bring things back to that right place yes that place of preference that place that we would like things to to be in so the place of where i want more not less of the situation oh come on now where i want more because that's the that's that greater existence to have everything in a space where i want more of this Mm -hmm. and to put your life in a space where i just want more of this i'm just gonna cultivate more of this 
And to do that, first you have to remove all the things that don't need to be there. So that lack of proper management, that lack of understanding that you are actually in control. Removing all that nonsense, all those things. And then saying, yeah, I want more of that. Removing the addiction to powerlessness, as you said it. Uh Because oftentimes you feel like, well, I can't control the situation. You're right. You can't. But you can control you and how you handle it. Each and every time. I know you hear my my sis over there. Uh, You better better hear her this morning. I love this place. Thank you, guys. (laughs) Thank you for being my tribe. You are absolutely welcome, and we love you too. Because that power talk. We'll be right back with more elevated conversations right here on the Greater Resistance Podcast. Welcome to the frequency that's all about turning you into a greater version of you. Welcome to the podcast that's offering you greater. You are now tuned in to the Greater Resistance Podcast with me, the Manifest Mentor, Brian Hippolyte. What would you say has changed about your household since your wife joined Manifest University? It's a lot more good energy, a lot more light, different conversations, less arguments, more communication, more openness. I love that. Thank you. It's not just a university. We are a tribe and a family. Join Manifest University today to be in my daily calls, my weekly classes, and a part of our 24-7 community. Go to BrianHippolyte.com or DoYouMU.com to join Manifest University today. Learn to love yourself. Loving yourself means you are authentic and one. Unless you create the necessary conditions, the things that you want will not happen. Nothing changes until you do. Now that shouldn't be a problem. Embracing change for your betterment should always be embraced, but I understand that we are creatures of habit. We are prone to self-sabotage and many other things that pull us away from uh, running towards our elevation, running towards creating that reality that we desire. We seem to want it to manifest in some other way other than us creating the conditions to allow it to be. So whatever it is that you want in your life, whatever it is that you want to see present in your life, begin to create the conditions that would allow it to be. Persuasion is a process. Power happens over time, just not in one moment. So if you have the power to make something happen and know that that's what you desire, then by all means, apply your plan. Turn your goal and your dream into a plan and walk it out. Let your attentions come to pass. This is my love letter. I pray when you read it. Every single word, you know that I mean it. You are a work of art. I stand in amazement. And I think what I'm saying is you're my favorite one of God's paintings. Welcome to the frequency that's all about turning you into a greater version of you. Welcome to the podcast that's offering you greater. You are now tuned in to the Greater Resistance Podcast. We got to be aware of the way that we're managing ourselves. That's what you're hearing. Right now, you're hearing stories of personal management. You're hearing stories from people who used to mismanage themselves all the time. All day. (laughs) And realize that, you know what? I'm not going to put all my time, effort, energy, and attention in managing everything else about life except my life. I'm not doing this no more. I'm not moving this way no more. Greater shall I be. Greater shall I do. Greater shall I have. And it's no longer acceptable for me to mismanage my life and spend everything that I'm doing, trying to manage everything else in life, but not managing mine. Mm -mm. Let me speak to the manager. Not who I need to talk to. Y'all ever had one of them situations when it was like, it wasn't the experience that you wanted? It wasn't, it's kind of like what, 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 uh, what Tiffany was just saying. It's like, it wasn't the experience that you wanted and you just, you know, let me speak to the manager. Let me speak to the person in charge. Let me speak 
to the one that has the power to create the reality that I desire, because clearly you don't. Let me speak to the manager. I think that's the next the next time you find yourself um, not in control of the way that you are experiencing life. And the, that next time that you may find yourself not in control of your feelings or the way that you are behaving. Just just inside. You don't got to say it out loud because I don't want you to look crazy. But inside, just say, hey, let me speak to the manager. And then you respond with the managing component of your existence that higher thought that, high, that God state that wholeness that joyfulness the part of you that knows that ships don't sink because of the water that got, that's outside of it they only sink because of the water that gets inside and I don't have to let everything that happens on the outside happen on the inside so I'm going to manage myself Properly, may I speak to the manager? Deacon Clark, I would love for you to, to come in here uh, real quick and emphasize uh, again and drop some knowledge on the difference between happiness and joy. You did such an amazing job at the Greater Existence Workshop of dropping this information on the difference between happiness and joy. And I think this it would just further accentuate and elevate the vibe right now. Um, you got a minute? Can you can you can you share that information with us? Absolutely, Pastor King. Um, thank you again for the opportunity. Um, ooh, let me speak to the manager. I think that's that's what myself told me without words. You helped me put it in words, um, Pastor King. Because really, remember, I said uh, I had to hog tie and duct take me. I put me in the corner. And it was like, we want to speak to the manager, the person who's in charge, because we watching you, we feeling you, we are experiencing your lack there of management of us. Mm. You got us rocking to stuff that we don't even rock to. You got us growing in places we know we ain't supposed to grow in. And yeah, we can grow there because we are creators. We can absolutely do that. But you got us growing in areas that is not conducive to what we supposed to be on. <laughs> Things, because things can grow outside of its natural environment, but it does not create the desired harvest. It doesn't harvest the same. But things can grow where it's not supposed to be, but it does not harvest the same. Go ahead, keep going. Because your power. So this is why you can. This is why people can benefit from you. We feel like people using us. Oh, they know you are source energy. How? Why would they not be attracted to you? Why would they not use you up? You ain't using you. <laughs> That's what it is. But so, can I speak to you? Yeah, absolutely. We are here for that. That's our service. Because we are that. We are source energy when we sleep. And we're source energy when we're not even thinking. Even your thought that you thought you didn't thought that didn't have anything has just as much power. But when you don't, when you aren't deliberate with that thought, so it can manifest something in your existence, then it's still gonna produce something lower than usually, and then you can't find the evidence of you in it. But can I speak to the manager? Like that is literally what myself said. You need to go on the corner. We can't talk to you. You're not needed here. We, we your feelings was important because we need you to feel. But you running this show? No, you can't run this show. Where's the real person who's in charge? Like, we want to speak to the higher in you. Because you punk faking us. You got us that we weren't supposed to be in, not at this moment. And yeah, and so I don't know if you remember me saying that in the beginning of Manifest, um, when we um, started and with the ladies on the powwow calls, where we spoke about, I spoke about personally saying, I had to hog tie and duct tape a version of myself. Because... You are the imposter. Where is the real manager that's in charge of this frequency and in charge of this God state that we supposed to be doing and that we are? Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Give me, let me speak to the person that has that capability. Uh Uh-huh. Because clearly, because if you have it, you're not exercising it. Yeah. And you're you're not bringing me the reality that I desire. You're not serving me with what I wanted. Let me speak to the manager. Mm-hmm. And that's like what Tiffany said. Like it wasn't, 
like you like wait a minute how is how did that outcome come out of what i feel on the inside how is this should have been pressed down shaking together running over like not me still feeling incomplacent not good enough and all those things no i should always feel joy and this excitement because i'm that but how am i doing the work and yet i'm not reaping the harvest of that and because the wrong person was in charge and we can allow our fears to be in charge we can allow our insecurities to be in charge that is what's going to control and direct your life and yeah man mm, i love it thank you yeah, absolutely. Cause that and that that'll change some things and just knowing what you want out of life and not settling for other you know, listen, we went we went somewhere yesterday to get some coffee and and they didn't have the pieces or components to what I wanted. And so I couldn't have what I wanted, so I just didn't get anything. Um I just like I'll just take I'll just get water then. And uh and you know, my queen looks at me and was like, You're not gonna get anything? I'm like, I'm not accustomed to having what I to to just settling for something else where if I can't have what I want, I just won't I just want I'm okay just not having it. <laughs> or or doing whatever else is necessary or can be done to to acquire it. But I'm not accustomed to just getting something else. And just having another experience outside of that which I desire. I'm accustomed to creating the opportunity to have what I desire. And and that trickles down to even just a cup of coffee, y'all. Like, it is what it is. That doesn't change because of how big or how small it is. It's a principle. We're not measuring the size of it because you can't. So don't be accustomed. Don't make yourself accustomed. Matter of fact, get out of that custom. You've been in this custom way too long. I know it's how what you was taught. I know we grew up on some hand-me-down shit. I knew we we came from environments and situations that taught us that you just take what you can get. But listen, that time is over. That season is past. You gonna have what it is that you desire. You're going to create the realities for what it is that you desire. And you're not going to settle for some for second best or for second something. That's not what the type of time that we on. Let's get let's let's get unused to that. Let's unlearn that. Because you can have the fullness that you desire. Deacon Clark, the the difference between joy and happiness, what is that? Got all excited about the manager. Okay, so the difference between joy and happiness. Happiness is happiness is what's outside of you is short-lived that um that you got to seek from something else joy is what's divinely given what you always have is never wavering never compromising knowing that if i can't get that in my coffee then i don't want it at all it's not several it 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 always is you can never take away from and it's a constant it's a constant thing and so happiness is third party and if you're looking, it usually comes when you're looking for it from the outside. And joy is just yours if you're willing to tap into it. Mm. Joy, so, happiness can be accumulated. Joy is uh, a well that springs from the inside of you. Yes, I like the way you did that. Yes. Yeah, and so happiness has to be pursued too. Joy, you joy just is. Joy just is. Happiness, you gotta run after happiness. You gotta seek out that joy. Just is. That's why they say the the pursuit of happiness. Because mm-hmm. that's something that you gotta be go out there to get. Some it's something that's that's out there. But joy just is. Joy exists. Joy is in it in its fullness. Yes. All the time. Joy is always on go. Yes. And, and on go meaning because it adapts to every environment. Not it has to chase after environment. See, joy just is. And happiness, when you got a pursuit of happiness, if it's summer, spring, and fall, then happiness changes. But joy adapts and makes the environment. I like the word co-creates or creates. Joy creates in any environment. Yes. Winter, spring, summer, fall. Yeah. And happiness is determined 
to the environment. Because happiness changes in the, in the in the environment. Happiness mean means something different in different environments. Mm-hmm. Joy is the same thing within you. This is some that's some good stuff right there. That'll change your life. It changed mine. <laughs> And so I created an acronym for this press scheme since you know I like I like words and I like making it um, work for me. So joy is joining. So the J in joy is for joining, meaning aligning your words, your thoughts, and your deeds. And um, the O is for uh, opportunity. So allowing everything to be what it is, and you getting what. Um, What's do you from that environment? So allowing every situation to be an opportunity. And then the why is for youthfulness because you do this from your childlike state, which is your childlike faith with no boxes, no, um, no limitedness. And that's how you stay in the joy because you align all of you. You see everything as an opportunity and you do it from a joyful state that allows you no fears, no boxes, no insecurities to now cultivate. That's that is amazing. Uh that is absolutely amazing, Dean Clark. What what was it, Jay? Jay is joining. So you joining is aligned. Yeah. So hey, you are hey, aligned with your words, your thoughts, and your deeds. So joining everything together. Because sometimes we're going Is that in your book? We just I just did that yesterday. <laughs> Hot off the press. That's some that's some stole cold game right there. Yeah, we haven't even wrote that down, but when I just thought of it, so uh huh. Y'all clap it up for the exclusive. <laughs> and because we'll take our we'll take our feelings and we ain't take our intellect into a place. So this is why you gotta join your your mindset, your heart set. And all of these things. So it's the aligning of that. Because sometimes we just take our fears and we ain't took the intellect that I wasn't given the spirit of fear. So we know that that fearfulness means nothing. I can still do this very thing that might I might be telling myself I can't even do. To that, go back to that, that uh you said we was not given the spirit of fear. Mm-hmm. But of power, love, and a sound mind. But yeah. when you allow fear to overwhelm you, you're not thinking in your sound mind. So this is why you got to align. This is why you got to ensure that everything is joined together. Like the hip bone needs to connect to the thigh bone. Because if not, you ain't going to be able to walk right. So we'll go in situations and we ain't walking right. Because we ain't aligned. All of us. We just moving from fear. We're moving from insecurity. But we ain't brought the intellect that knows that that I am the change in this picture. That I can change the narrative right now at this moment. In spite of what just happened. 10 seconds ago. So you were given a sound mind. We can, we, it's, it's easy to reference that scripture and relate to it when we speak on the first two things. We weren't given a, a spirit of fear, but a, of power. Some people say peace, but it's, it's power of power uh, and love. And that's and that seems easy to, re, to, to receive and believe. But the truth is, you are also given, supplied with a sound mind. A sound mind. A sound mind. And so that sounds like it's something that a master, creator, or designer may have thought was just as important and just as vital for you to have as power, as peace. You know, for you to have a sound mind and be moving from a sound mind, if you're not moving and existing from a sound mind you're not creating sound experiences Uh huh. let me speak to the manager uh huh and now you're just making noise you're not harmonizing you're not in tune you're just making noise they can't harmonize they're not listening you can't you can't harmonize if you're not listening to yourself if you're not listening to your soul the same way that a singing group can, can't harmonize if they're not listening to each other you could you could uh-huh. you, you know you you will be cool as long as you just play your motherfucking part sometimes your motherfucking part is 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 knowing where you fit in in this situation and and i'm going i'm going to do my part you're going to do your, uh, your, your part and when we do it together it makes harmony but we have to listen to each other in order to do that and and the same thing happens when it comes to our internal management if you're not listening to the components of your mind by mind body soul and vibration 
and you're just going off of the impressions of your mind, but you're not listening to what your soul got to say, how could you be in harmony? And then you're li- then you are liable to to connect to a different frequency because you off pitch so now this sounds like you so now you going over here yeah i can't go for that mm-hmm. no no i can't go for that <laughs> i can't go for that <laughs> yes yeah that's it that's it let me speak to the manager because you're doing this you're doing this all wrong but we think of it. I mean, we think about managing everything when it comes to economics, when it comes to industry, when it comes to family. When you know, we were taught to manage our emotions, or always, or at least always told that. You know, like we apply managing to everything else except our internal state. And the purpose for internal management is to have well-being and to have success because it don't matter how well you seem to manage other things if you aren't managing yourself it doesn't matter it doesn't work it doesn't bring you what you want out of life so you can't manage the outside until you manage what's inside if you not properly manage what's inside what's outside will never fulfill you we've seen it happen with people in the entertainment industry and and just in any realm of of success that they clearly manage some a few things well to get them the fortune to get them the fame to get them the notoriety but they weren't managing themselves so everything that they were able to uh obtain and acquire really worked as a detriment because it just was just more for them to have but not have happiness and at some point in time they looked around and said damn how can i have all these things and not have happiness something must be wrong with me and they deemed themselves to uh not be in good states and f- fell into depressions and we I mean we've seen so many different stages of it up until when these people take their lives and everyone else is sitting around saying but they had it all but they didn't have anything that mattered they didn't have internal management they weren't speaking to the manager You are now tuned in to the Greater Resistance Podcast with me, the Manifest Mentor, Brian Hippolyte. Manifest University impacts my life because it helps me have the accountability that I need. It shows me exactly the things that I need in being able to see myself and the ones around me and then when I do have an issue I can come and talk it through with them yes. you know that's that's important having that support system yes it aligns with my children and how I interact with my children how I help prepare them to have the tools they need for life it's not just a university we are a tribe and a family Join Manifest University today to be in my daily calls, my weekly classes, and a part of our 24-7 community. You can go to brianhippolite.com or doumu.com to join Manifest University today. I'm an amazing kid. Amazing kid. Buy, buy my book today and get the ebook and affirmation absolutely free. Welcome to the frequency that's all about turning you into a greater version of you. Welcome to the podcast that's offering you greater. You are now tuned in to the Greater Resistance Podcast with me, the Manifest Mentor, Brian Hippolyte. In 24 hours, how many moments are you really having? How many moments are you experiencing joy? How many In 24 hours, how many moments are you the expression of joy? Let's say that. Look over your day. Look over how you experience it and be, be aware from this moment forward. Be aware how many moments of, a, of the 24 hours in the day are you the expression of joy. A few months ago, um, 
when my oldest turned seven, one of her birthday wishes was that she would see her father smile more. And I I turned around that night and, and, and made a decree. I went on Twitter and was like, yo, I'm 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 making a decree. You know, gotta be real if it starts on Twitter. And I'm going to be a greater expression of joy for my child to see. Cause it don't matter what I'm telling everybody else, child. If my own child is saying, for my birthday, when I'm blowing, when she's blowing out her candles, one of the things that she wished for is to see the expression of joy more in her father. All right, I got to do something about that. Happiness is essential. I can look over now, and I think last time I asked her, she, she's, she's let it be known that she definitely sees much more joy. She sees happiness. She doesn't ask me if I'm happy the way that she used to. And I ain't, ain't really understand it, I guess, in the, in the moment when she would just randomly say, Daddy, are you happy? And it was obviously because of the expression on my face. And I, I was, yeah, I'm happy. I'm cool. I'm First of all, I'm always happy if I'm with you. Second of all, yeah, I'm happy. Okay. But the reason why she's asking is because she didn't see the evidence of it. So I'm asking you, as somebody who was a reformed, happy person, in 24 hours, how many moments are you the expression of joy, the expression of happiness? If you spend so much time in the pursuit of happiness, and if you know that joy abounds abundantly from within you but your life is not the expression of these things but you're pursuing happiness all the things on the outside that can make you happy there's joy pouring out from within you like an overflowing well or a spring but there aren't a mass there isn't a massive amount of expression of joy in your life then You're mismanaging your life. You're a bad manager of your life. Because you should have joy flowing through it. Happiness complimenting it all around. Happiness is essential. And joy is vital for well being. In a successful life. You can call, you got your hand up. So when we mismanage the enemy, it feels like the enemy. The enemy, when you mismanage the enemy. Yes, when you mismanage the enemy, the inner you where your source lies, tapping within. And when you have a mismanage of the inner me, it feels like the enemy. That's exactly what it is. That's you got bars this morning, okay? Okay. So if you're going through life in pursuit of happiness and not living happily, you are mismanaging your life. And if you aren't managing anything on purpose, you can only be managing it by accident. Anytime that you're managing by accident, calamity is normal. Potential calamity is always present. And anytime potential calamity is normal, is present. Anxiety is normal. Anxiety is present. Stress is normal. Stress is present. I've seen somebody be completely unprepared for something that they had to do, and they were losing their shit. And I've seen someone with the same exact task that had planning and preparation and um, ahead of them, and they were just cool, calm, and collective and executed flawlessly. They managed themselves. Not only were they managing themselves in the moment, but they managed themselves prior to that moment to be prepared for that moment. So they managed their time. They managed uh, their intention. They managed the things that they executed just so that they can properly manage themselves in the moment. So are you managing your life on purpose or by accident? When you are prepared, there is a stress. 
Your job isn't stressful. It's your lack of preparation for it that makes it stressful. It's a lack of understanding, a lack of willingness, or complete lack of alignment. But these things aren't stressful. They just aren't being managed appropriately. Again, if you aren't managing on purpose, you are managing by accident. So ask yourself. You don't got to say it out loud, but ask yourself. Am I managing my life appropriately? Am I managing on purpose or by accident? The nature of the job does not make it stressful. It's a lack of preparation and understanding that makes it difficult. So if you are a manager, what are you managing? I know that you are mind, body, soul, vibration of those four things. What are you managing? What do you spend your time managing? Are there any of those four things that you do not spend your time, effort, energy, and intention managing? Because if there is, there is a component of your life that is not going to bring you the harvest that it has the potential to bring you because it's not being properly managed. In order to have the harvest that is desired, you have to manage the crop correctly. You have to give it what it needs. Like Deacon Clark said, things can grow in the wrong place. But you won't have the harvest that's desired. So are you growing in the wrong place? Is that the reason why there's lack? Is that the reason why you're unprepared? Is that the reason why you don't have the overstandings working in your life? Managing mind, body, soul, and vibration. You've been taught and trained to manage your emotions, but not manage your vibration. And that's why your life has experienced many of the hardships that it has been managed see even if you're a good manager of your mind but you're not managing your vibration you are losing at the game of life you hear me like if you're not aware and attentive and in control of your vibration but even if you got your mind all together which many people don't if you're not managing your vibration you're losing You're lacking power. You're lacking ability. Because your mind is just the impressions that you've that 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 your intellect has gathered. Your mind is just your logic, your thoughts, your learned behavior, things that you believe is impressions of things that have come through your experience. So manage your impressions by all means. By all means, manage your impressions and use them so that they can be an asset to you, not a detriment to you. But understand that if you are mind, body, soul, and vibration, just managing your mind or even just catering to your body, but not playing playing the proper amount of attention and management to your soul and to your vibration will always mean that you will be lacking in all the places that matter. Being mindful of your body, catering to your body, catering to the impressions of your body, which is like Sagru said, it's just a heap of things that you've eaten. It's all your body is. It's just a, uh, the impressions made from things that you've eaten. And bullshit could get you to the top. It'll, it'll never let you stay there. So there's a lot of things that you may do to cater to your body. And it might feel good. It might make you feel good. It might make you look good. But listen, it's never going to stay. It's never going to keep you to whatever place it takes you to because it's not the truth of your existence. So bullshit could get you to the top, but it'll never let you stay there. I'm going to tell you a story about that. Not right now, but I'm going to tell you a story a little bit later about bullshit. But eternal management is required. So if to to let today be the day for somebody, for one of you, at least one of you, today should be the day that you decide to 
start internal management at a whole nother level. I'm talking about if you if you if you already been on it, then let's move, let's let's get a promotion. Let's go to upper management. Let me speak to the manager. I want to talk to the person who is in charge, the person who is capable of creating the reality and the experience that I require and desire. Let me speak to the manager. You've been catering to your mind. Now it's time. Speak to the manager. You've been catering to your body. It's a great opportunity to speak to the manager. What are your soul and what are your vibrations talking about? Manage those things appropriately and correctly and watch what happens what up welcome back to the greater resistance podcast of course i'm your host brian hippolyte the manifest mentor and today i'm here with manifest university and we have been talking about internal management and the things that we are doing actively to create the desired results and the desired realities in our lives And if you want to join in our conversation and join our tribe and our family, you are more than welcome to go to BrianHippolyte.com or DoYouMU.com to be a part of this amazing, mighty Manifest University. So let's jump right back in it. What is it that we do to get us back into our proper place? Place of power, place of control. What is it that we do to bring us back? Whenever we have noticed that we've moved out of alignment, that's absolutely important to identify these things. They should be your go-tos. I mean, my my kids are definitely a go-to for me, first and foremost, to get me back into a place that I don't, you know, get me me back from a place that I don't want to be in. Regardless of how I I got there, what, 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 you know, what the cause of it is, um, the joy that I experience when I'm just, you know, with my kids definitely puts me back into that high place. It definitely takes away whatever, you know, whatever was in my mind or whatever had got a hold of me at that moment or whatever I had a hold of at that moment. Uh, so I identify with that. Um, you know, and like she was saying, like, know what's going to work for you and then milk it. I always know I can go and get on some music. And in my creative space, I'm going to, you know, I'm going I'm to I'm fall in love with, with music all over again, every time, you know, um, and, and no matter what's going on around me or whatever was taking place, that's going to set me back up on high and I'll go and I'll milk that. With my, you know, with 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 my children, spend time with my with, with, with my children, or even just holding them. Let me, you know, in the mornings when I wake up and I don't feel the way I want to, the way that I want to feel, the first time I'm gonna do is go lay down with my children, and go hold my children. They don't even gotta be awake. They don't even they don't even have to play an active part. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go in their room and hold them. And it's going to make, you know, make me feel better. I'll milk it every single time because I already know that that is something that has power and that gives me power. So since that's what we're talking about, like, we just got to be aware of what gives us power. What brings us back to that, to that place, that high spirit, so that we can manage ourselves correctly. Anybody else got anything that they want to share, anything that they want to bring in? Great day, Flower. How you doing? Oh, man, I feel amazing. Um, I was up late. I was up late, and I seen uh, Deacon Clark, the doctor of the heart, post something, post a Facebook video. She was out sweating, and it just, I don't know, it just, it just like lit a flame up under my ass, and you know, I got an 11-11 goal, and I've challenged myself. So this morning, I said, fuck them children. Woke up at 6.30 and um, went and got my, my mile in. And um, that's, that's, where my, that's where I feel most like myself, free and running and charged and energized. And you know, I've been 
I've been down for a couple of days, like sick, like it's been going through the family. And I was the last one to get it, of course, because mom can't be sick when everybody else is sick. Right. So, um, but yeah, I just pushed through. And I think my pushing through, my, um, my, my energy when there, when it feels like there's zero fuel, like that's when I feel like most empowered. Like I get what y'all saying when you're around your children, so you just feel that that everlasting love, that 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 life. But for me, it's when I'm almost I'm I'm, I'm almost gone, and I push through. Like that's when I feel like. Yeah. You know what I mean? Most powerful. Is that what we're talking about? It's whatever bring you your power. Whatever whatever take whatever takes you back into alignment, whatever uh, uplifts your, your vibration to, and and takes you back to that place that you wanna be. Yeah, it's uh. it's the place where it's the point where my mind, my spirit connects to the physical and I'm like, boom, go. You know what I mean? Because yeah. sometimes your mind will say, you know what I mean? Let me do this. Let me get this done. Or I want to do this. But then you don't physically or, you know what I mean? You don't, in reality, do it. Right. You don't move. But when my mind and my spirit connect to my reality and my physical, that's when I feel most empowered. Mm-hmm. And, that, and, and, and that's the best time uh, to manifest the things that you want and get get the manifest the you know, things you want when there's no resistance to your mm-hmm. to your to your um experience. Yeah, it's no it's really no thinking. Yeah. It's really just activation. Yeah. You know, and that's like boom. Like why was it why why did I put this off? Yeah. Absolutely. Because I was thinking. I was overthinking. <laughs> Feel how you want. Manifest what you want, and um, and definitely not be sl- uh, slaves or not be captive by your mind or by the impressions of your mind, by the by your feelings and your you know your emotions and no different things. Jelani, great day, bro. How you doing? You good, my guy? I'm feeling great today, man. Self awareness is one of the big keys to staying in your voice in your vortex. That's one of the big ones because you go in and out of the vortex every day, all day, every day. But you're just so caught up in the day that you don't realize it. That's why people start to snowball before they could even catch themselves, and then the whole day just going to shit. Right. So self awareness is, is is a big one when it comes to staying in the vortex or staying in alignment or staying in um, source energy. <clears throat> Absolutely. That's a big part of it. That's a really big part of it. Being aware is, you know, lately I stopped saying be careful when I talk to the kids because Whitney doesn't say be careful. She always tells them to be mindful. And, and then when they ask, well, what does that mean? Be aware of what you're doing. <laughs> You know what I mean? In, in, in every moment. Because that is what is going to lead you to the next moment that you desire. You're going to get caught slipping if you're not, if you, if you're not aware. You know? So being aware of self and, and self management goes hand in hand the same way that self management and emotional intelligence goes hand in hand. We'll be right back. Elevated conversations right here on the Greater Resistance Podcast. You are now tuned in to the Greater Resistance Podcast with me, the Manifest Mentor, Brian Hippolyte. I love all that is coming before me. I am an extension of source energy. I see endless opportunity, and I will enjoy aligning with the ones that are aligned with me. I am elated to be in a place of alignment and opportunity. I like the forward motion feeling I am feeling. I see universal energy responding to my thoughts. 
I enjoy the assurance and confirmation I receive that I am in alignment with divine energy and operating on frequencies of abundance. I feel empowered and highly capable. I love that I am my greatest source of solution and no longer my biggest source of problem. I am at peace and experience thoughts of pleasure and abundance. I am happy that I am attracting aligned relationships that increase all that is positive within me. I enjoy seeing all that is great within me influence greatness on other people in other environments. I love the power I possess to be greater than I've ever been. I welcome my glory. I welcome an outpouring of God's abundance. I feel the presence of God in all that I do. I love the feeling of clarity and understanding that is within me. I am grateful for all of my experiences and I can see how they have prepared me to excel at this very moment. I love that I have released lack, accepted abundance, and begun walking in my infinity. This is a great day, and I am connected to abundance because I am connected to the source energy within me. My authenticity brings me power, and I use that power to prosper in my divine purpose. Everything is working out for me. I have released all resistance to my abundance. I have laid down every mindset, action, reaction, behavior, and energy that creates a resistance to my peace, power, prosperity, and joy. Today I will not create limitation. Today will be a day well lived. On this great day, I remain open to the pleasures life has to offer me and is here to bring me. Today I will get closer to my goals. Today I will avoid the distractions of anything not related to my purpose or goal. I will move in alignment with the vibration of my greatest self. I accept that I am exactly where I am supposed to be right now. And there is something that will add to my ability to have peace, power, prosperity, joy, and abundance. I find comfort in knowing the divine power within me knows the path I should take that will have the least resistance and offer the most joy. Today, I will live out my purpose. I know and I understand that I have entered this space of reality at this time for a purpose greater than I. Today, I will direct my thoughts and intentions in the directions of my purpose. I am aware that if I respond to things differently, I can get different things out of them. Today I will not relinquish my control over how I respond to the events of life. What happens throughout my day will not dictate my attitude, outlook, or how I feel. I have already made it up in my mind that peace, clarity, and purpose rule and reign in my life. I will only direct my energy towards what will bring an abundance of the things I want present in my life. I am connected to my highest vibration.
I am connected to the infinite possibilities of peace, power, prosperity, joy, and abundance. I am rooted in this present moment. My body is my home, and I pledge to always build it up and never tear it down. My body is a safe home for my radiant spirit. I vibrate powerful, abundant, peaceful energy and attract this same energy in return. Deep inner peace is my natural state. I cultivate an atmosphere that promotes freedom of idea. If I am ever unsure, stillness brings the truth of myself back to me. I am grateful to know that I am always deeply loved and supported by this universe. I deeply appreciate my ability to remain calm and peaceful in all situations. I am grateful for the abundance of strength that radiates throughout my entire body. I build my life on the foundation of faith, peace, love, purpose, and alignment. I am whole and complete, exactly as I am. I trust that my life is what it needs to be. I release and abandon every thought and path that offers resistance to my abundance. I have everything I need. I nurture my body with what it needs to flourish. I respect my body's need to rest and my mind's need to recharge. I am grateful for the current opportunity to reach my goals and highest potential. I love this feeling of high vibration. It is natural for me to experience love and joy. My life moves in harmony and ease. I will conduct my mind and emotions in a way that does not lead to stress or anxiety. I enjoy identifying my plan, creating my plan, and executing my plan. I rely on my inner knowing and intuition to guide me. I am fully present in this moment of gratitude. I am aware of the boundless amount of wonderful things that await me. a great day and I will be great in it. I embrace this new day and find joy in its arrival. Today I embrace the rhythm of life and let it unfold. I focus on action to create the life I want. On this great day, I know and I trust my intuition to take me in the right direction. This day, is full of greatness and great things. There is greatness waiting for me today. Today I am overjoyed. Today, peace is with me. This is a new day, a new opportunity, a new beginning, a great opening of wonder, a gateway of infinite possibilities find much purpose and fulfillment in this day. This day will bring me opportunities to expand my knowledge, my understanding, my strength, and my ability. I am great. I feel great. I am thinking great thoughts about myself and my life. I am showing up as the greatest version of me today. 
Today I will rise to the opportunity to be greater than I've ever been. Today is a great day, and I will be great in it. This is my greater existence.